We have been to several Asian countries, but there's one specific one we have not been to yet. And I'm going to tell you about it today. Hello, welcome to Around the World with Joshua and Alyssa, and we are going to tell you another place today that we would like to go, and Alyssa is going to tell us about it because she picked out the place this time, and so what is that place? I really, really, really want to go to Thailand. Oh, yes. So I have some pictures of some things I think I'd really like to see if I go to Thailand. I would love to go to Thailand to see the temples because they have all sorts of really old temples and a bunch of different designs. Like this one just looks like it's stacked rocks, but it's lots and lots of layers. But then they also have temples like this that are mm. super elaborate. I have seen pictures of that one, I think. All sorts of crazy designs and stuff. They look really, really cool. The sad part is that these temples are built to worship false gods, but we can um, appreciate the creativity of these people to put together these things and we know that God's given us that creativity instead. It's not much different really than like the pyramids because those were built for the pharaohs who they considered to be gods and some other things as well. It's, it's not just temples um, that are like that. Thailand also has a time of year where they release these floating lanterns into the air, oh. which would be really cool to be there for that, but I'm sure there's lots and lots and lots and lots of other people that want to be there at the same time. But that would be really cool. Someday, maybe. <laughs> um, Thailand is also really famous for floating markets. So they have like your typical market, but outside and people are in boats. The people selling stuff on yeah. the boats so you walk by and... you can also get in a boat and shop as you go through oh, it what? yeah okay let's do that, that sounds really cool yeah and i love thai food so it'd be really fun to like go to those markets and see the food like just right there and easily mm -hmm. to buy it and everything one of my all-time favorites is green papaya salad and it's so tasty and spicy really really yummy so if i went to thailand i would love to go to a cooking class and they teach Ooh, you how to make that's these a good idea. things so i would really love to do that one and of my thai friends did that peanut sauce oh yes so they good. do lots of stuff with peanuts and it's really yummy. well that's because they know how to do it really well yeah and if i went to thailand i would love to go to an elephant sanctuary so it's where they bring elephants to kind of protect them from being just used for show and stuff Okay. Um, but you can still feed them and they're really gentle elephants. They're just better taken care of in these places than some of the other ones. Plus I've gotten to see an African elephant, so now I need to go see an Asian, Asian elephant. elephant. Yep. They're smaller. Yeah. And I think they have a little different shape when I was looking at pictures online. They they do they are a little bit more unique than the African elephant. Okay. A lot more brown than like hmm. the blue green that we saw. Oh that. yeah, that's true. And Thailand is also really famous for beaches, and I do love the beach and the ocean, so I wouldn't mind seeing a few beaches. It does remind me, this picture reminds me a lot of the Philippines, though. I bet they have a lot of yeah. similar characteristics in the water, sky, like, terrain and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I had lots of friends who went to Thailand when I was on Guam, and they said that it wasn't super expensive once you got there. It was just, like, expensive to get there. A lot of the stuff that when you got there, super bad yeah but hopefully someday we'll go to Thailand. Mm -hmm. yep okay i have some more story okay so we left off our story last time with majugo showing his brothers um his little book and his brothers all decided to trust christ as their savior and do you remember what they asked him um about at the end of our lesson last time they asked if they could have some of his book and he got really upset and he ran out of the room and he was really bothered by that. Well, he ran back to his room and he tucked that special book he had from the missionaries with no words in it, just colors, under his mat on the floor. He didn't want his brothers to, to look at it 
or to think about wanting him to take it apart. How could he? How could they even ask him to cut up his book? He remembered all the times he had with the missionaries, and he really loved this book, and he was so glad that they had given it to him. But what had the missionary told him? He told him, you should share this with your brothers and with your village. So was cutting it up a way he should be sharing it with his brothers in his village? But he really, really didn't want to do that. Well, he went to sleep that night, and he prayed about it, and he asked God what he should do. And he just kept thinking, and he really didn't want to cut his book into pieces, but he thought about it, and he would wake up when in the middle of the night and think about it some more and go back to sleep. And he woke up again really early in the morning, and he took the little book out, and he used his fingers on the edges of it to see if he could figure out how big each of the pieces would be if he were to cut it up. He thought they would be so small if I cut it, even if, and I have a really sharp hunting knife, I could do it, but... What should I do? But deep down inside, he really knew what he should do with it. He knew what the right thing was. So before it was even super light outside, he went out to um, a cacao tree stump in his yard with his hunting knife and his little book. And he looked at it a couple more times and he set it down on the log. And then he heard his brothers just walking along and talking with each other. They must have been out and about already. And they kind of stopped a ways away and just stared at him. He thought, no, don't watch. What am I going to do? Well, he wished they would go away, but they just stayed. So he put his little book down on the stump and took his really sharp knife across it and he cut it into two pieces. And his brothers were watching really close now. They wanted to see what was happening. They didn't see anything. They just stood there. They watched. He put his knife right against all those beautiful colors and split them. Now he had two sections. And once more he picked up his big hunting knife, turned the papers, and he cut again until now he had four little neat piles. And his brothers just stood there. They didn't say anything either. Madugo picked one up and he handed one to each of his brothers and then he kept one. When he thought he was going to feel really sad about it, he actually didn't. He felt really happy. He was glad he had shared with his brothers. He said, Mother can help us sew up the edges, and then we can each have a book. And his brothers smiled too. They were so happy to have a little piece of this book, just as happy as Madugo had been when the missionary had given it to him. We have our own piece. Now we can share the story with so many people, with our whole village. And Madugo felt happy inside. He knew he had done what was right. He had shared the joy of what had been given to him with somebody else, and now his brothers would be able to share the good news of Jesus and the gospel and the stories with so many other people. He was really glad he made this choice and that he was going to get to share with so many other people. So that is our story of Madugo, the story of a little boy from Liberia. And I don't know if you noticed, but we finished the last part of the story, but it's only week four. So something special is coming next week. So you better come back for that. I feel like that story needs to be longer. Like more stuff happened after they all got their books. Back. That would be really cool if they would have extended That's it. what I was expecting. But... No, they just got them and then, but they had the opportunity now they could share with people. Mm -hmm. And that was really great. He shared with his brothers too. Yeah. All right, then. We are going to give you a report on some missionary friends of ours who it has been about a year since we last really? highlighted them. Yeah. I didn't realize that until I was looking back Oops. in our records. And, That's a long yeah. time. So they are Tyler and Catherine Betts in France. And since the last time we looked at them, they have changed the way their family looks a little bit. Oh, they added a family member. <laughs> so she was pregnant with their youngest last time, but now Lucy is on the outside. <laughs> so that was probably their biggest highlight, or it was, I should change it. It was their biggest <laughs> highlight from 2021. The opportunity for them to welcome their daughter Lucy into their family. 
Tyler says she is a bundle of joy and almost always has a smile on her face. Aww. Reminds me a lot of Tyler. <laughs> Another highlight was having my parents and little brother come visit us just after Christmas. So here's a picture of Lucy about a week after she was born and Liam giving her a nice little kiss. And then there's the Betts family going out to visit after Christmas. They enjoyed spending a little vacation time with them in southern France. I asked what were some ministry highlights from 2022 and their top 21? two... 21? Yes. Whew. Don't Man, worry, we haven't time, made it through 2022 time goes by yet. Fast. From 2021, their top two ministry highlights would be the relationship that God has allowed them to build with the Gautreaux family. I think it's something along those lines, but it's French, so it's probably not the best pronunciation. <laughs> so here they are, Nadia and Manu and Vincent. God has given them several opportunities to talk with them about spiritual things, and on several occasions they have been able to share the gospel with Vincent and he came to their church's Christmas program as well. Oh, cool. The Christmas party that they had with the International Student Ministry was another highlight and here is one of the students from that I believe. The majority of the students that attend this ministry are Muslim so it is quite a cool opportunity to read the Christmas story from the Bible with them and to discuss who Jesus is with them. Oh, interesting. Tyler said that in France, the tradition is to have a big Christmas Eve meal. It starts on Christmas Eve around 9 or 10 o'clock and then finishes early Christmas morning. Hmm. Sounds nice. However, they did have a little bit of a different experience. Uh, they had a Christmas party with Tyler's basketball team and they wanted to have a big meal to celebrate after one of the games. So the game started late and didn't get over until just before midnight. Whoa. Then they didn't start eating supper until after 1 a.m. And then Kat and Tyler were the first to leave the party at 3.30 a.m. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> so that sounds crazy. Here's another group picture with some international students. I asked what are they looking forward to in 2022. And one thing they would like to do is to start hosting a small group meeting at their house. This would allow them to get to know the people in their church better and to improve their French. So far, they have not been able to do this because of COVID restrictions. Yes. So for prayer requests and praises, uh, the big prayer request would be for the family we showed you earlier, for Nadia and Manu and Vincent. And the other one, the other prayer request is for this uh, international college student outreach. Uh, La Poor Toy Ministry. That's the best I can do. So, <laughs> we don't uh, speak French. <laughs> yes. Pray for them as they reach out to this family and for their salvation, and then also for international students and for their continued progression in French. And of course, praises that they've been able to build these relationships with these people and that their family has now grown some more. And that God is continuing to give them a passion for the French people and work with them there. So really exciting. Glad to see the things that God is doing in their life and what connections they've been able to make. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Come back next week. We'll do a summary and something special for Missionary Story. Mm -hmm. Somewhere else we want to go. See ya. Bye. Bye.